Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis combo control deck titled Sweet Release as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the goal of the deck is to play turn 2 of Valky God of Lies and then turn 3 targeted with a Release to the Wind which is a 3 mana instant saying exile target a non-land permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. So an interesting thing we get to do with the dual faced cards from Kaldheim is cast either side of the card once we exile it with Release of the Wind, which means that on turn 3 we can cast Tybalt Cosmic Imposter for free, so we get to cheat on quite a bit of mana and get the powerful Planeswalker in play way ahead of schedule. And turn 3 Tybalt usually wins the game, if not it pulls you ahead pretty quickly. And then we can do a similar thing with Alrund, a god of the cosmos, where we can play turn 2 Haka Whispering Raven, attack the opponent, and then in response to the scry 2 trigger, we can exile it with our least to the wind, and then cast Alrund, a god of the cosmos, which also gets us a nice mana discount. Can't quite do the same with Nickel Ball as the Ravager, since it's also a dual faced card, but this is a transform card, so it doesn't quite work in the same way. But because we have a lot of built in ramp, playing Nickel Ball still makes sense as a powerful 4 mana creature that survives our sweeper effects, and then we can quickly transform it into Nickel Ball as the Arisen, which can also provide a ton of card advantage. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. We are a bit of a control deck, so we do have at 1 mana the full play set of Blood Chief's Thirst as our removal spell of choice, and the reason we're playing Thirst over Fatal Push is partly due to Alrund, God of the Cosmos, which wants us to name a card type. So if we name Sorcery, we have a higher chance of finding more action, which is why we're playing the Sorcery over the Instant, and then of course has additional utility in the late game, killing larger creatures and planeswalkers. And then we also have the full set of Thoughtseize to make sure we can take away any card that might disrupt our game plan. Then at 2 mana, we've got our full set of Valky God of Lies, which we're typically only going to play as a creature if we also have our Release to the Wind in hand, otherwise we typically want to save it to cast Tybalt Cosmic Imposter, because we do have a lot of built-in ramp with 4 copies of Cold Steel Heart, enters battlefield tapped and then we choose a color and it adds 1 mana of the chosen color, so it also provides a bit of mana fixing. And then 2 copies of Mind Stone, which can also ramp and be sacrificed later in the game to also draw a card. And then two copies of Cathartic Reunion as another sorcery we can potentially find with Alrund. And this can discard two cards to draw three, so we can maybe get rid of some of the combo pieces we don't need anymore. Then at 3 mana, besides Release to the Wind, we have the full set of Sweltering Suns as our Sweeper Effect of choice, dealing 3 damage to each creature. can also be cycled for 3 mana in matchups where we don't need it. And Sweltering Suns typically is not going to kill our Nicol Ball as a Ravager or Alrund, God of the Cosmos. And if we have a Haka Whispering Raven, we can simply attack with it first to return it back to our hand. And then we can safely cast our Sweeper without losing anything. And then we also have 2 copies of Ritual of Soot as an additional Sweeper, destroying all creatures with converted mana cost 3 or less. So once again, this is not going to kill any of our creatures, and is usually quite powerful at resetting the board. And then we've got three copies of Nickel Ball as the Ravager, a 4 mana 4 4 flyer that when it enters a battlefield, each opponent has to discard a card. And then for 7 mana, we can transform Nickel Ball as into the Planeswalker side, which starts out at 7 loyalty, can plus 2 to draw 2 cards, minus 3 to deal 10 damage to target creature or Planeswalker, minus 4 to put target creature or Planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, and the minus 12 ultimate can also be game winning, exiling all but the bottom card of target player's library. And then topping off our curve, we've got three copies of Alrund, God of the Cosmos. Can first play Haka, Whispering Raven as a 2 mana 2-3 flyer. And when it deals combat damage to a player, we return it to its owner's hand and then get to Scry 2. And that Scry 2 is going to come in handy if we're planning to cast Alrund, God of the Cosmos at 5 mana. A 1-1 one, one that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each card in our hand and each foretold card we own in exile. So this is going to be quite large if we happen to release to the wind at on turn 3. And then at the beginning of our end step, choose a card type and then reveal the top two cards of our library and put all cards revealed this way of the chosen type into our hand and the rest on the bottom. So if we're looking for answers, we typically want to name sorcery to find our various sweepers and removal spells. If we're looking for more threats, we can name creature. And if we just want the highest chance of finding anything at all, we can just name land to help us increase Alrun's power and toughness. But of course, if we get to scry two from Haka, we know some of the cards on top of our library, so we can make a more informed decision as well. 
And then of course we've got our Tybalt Cosmic Imposter, which we sometimes just ramp into at 7 mana thanks to our various ramp artifacts. Starts out at 5 loyalty, and when Tybalt enters the battlefield we get an emblem saying we may play cards exiled with a Tybalt Cosmic Imposter and spend mana as though it was mana of any color to cast those spells. Then the plus 2 exiles the top card of each player's library, the minus 3 exiles target artifact or creature, and the minus 8 ultimate exiles all cards from all graveyards, and we get to add triple red to our mana pool. So that's an extra reason to want damage-based sweeper effects as opposed to exile-based ones. So Tybalt has more stuff to potentially get back out of the graveyard with the minus 8 ultimate ability. And then the mana base, we've got a few shock lands here with four copies of Blood Crypt, two copies of Steam Vents, and four copies of Watery Grave, alongside four copies of Dragon Skull Summit, which will come into play untapped if we had one of those shock lands in play, or if we have one of our two basic lands, we've got a basic swamp and a basic mountain, and then a couple pathways to round out the mana base, with two of the blue-black one, two of the blue-red one, and four of the black-red one. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with, yeah, pretty controlling draw up against a Lurus deck, so it could be Spirit Dancer, in which case Thirst is pretty important. And then Haka can potentially be played off the blue mana from Cold Steel Heart and help us find whatever we need. And our opponent does seem to be on a Spirit Dancer type deck. All right, so Heart names blue. And then we can transform Haka with Release to the Wind at some point as well. If our opponent runs out Spirit Dancer, we can just Sweltering Suns. It's going to be Hallow Blade instead. That one's a little bit trickier to get rid of. Ooh, Tybalt. So I can play Falky, Bloodchief's Thirsty Altseed perhaps. Or we can just wait until we can Sweltering Suns to clean up most of the board. And then Tybalt can exile the Hallow Blade as well. I don't mind playing Valky, see what's up, and then decide based on what we see how we want to use the Bloodchief's Thirst. Alright, so they have another Hallow Blade. Ways to give flying and ways to draw cards. So let's thirst the Alsade here. And then next turn, when we transform Tybalt, Hallowblade should be the only creature in play, so they won't have too many ways to pressure our Planeswalker. And of course we don't mind if they put some Aurons on the Hallowblade since we'll be able to exile them. So there's a Staggering Insight. And an Arcane Flight. Now they will get the other Hallow Blade back, so we will still need to find answers for that one. For now we get to attack. And release. And exile. And then next turn we can route Sweltering Suns, make them discard a card, but they can still fly over, so playing a Hell Blade as a blocker is not really going to cut it. And it's going to be a Spirit Dancer instead. Yeah, and it's going to pick up three additional toughness here, so survive Sweltering Suns. So I need to hit big with uh, Tybalt here. Cathartic and all that glitters, so... Can Cathartic discarding Sweltering Suns in the hopes of finding Bloodchief's Thirst here. I can always play Haka as a Chum Blocker as well, which can maybe save Tybalt for a turn. So let's go for it. All 
Alright, no removal. So it's going to be Haka on defense. It's going to be one big Spirit Dancer. Although we can exile it again with Tybalt. Although, never mind. So they can give protection from blue, although then the flying enchantment would fall off. That also works. So just a 3-5 Spirit Dancer, which is not enough to kill Tybalt. So we'll plus again. Sweltering sends the draw. Maybe I should have attacked first with Haka, but now we can just block again. How about SRAM into all that glitters? Maybe Hello Blade as well. Put all that glitters on the Hello Blade. And then. I'll keep Haka back so they can't use a protection trick again to kill Tybalt. And we've got a backup Tybalt waiting in the wings. So we're using the opponent's own deck against him here. Uh, another arcane flight, so glad we've got Haka on defense. Curious Obsession, yep. Yeah. So I can just jump and then minus Tybalt's. Hope they don't have a protection spell. When just going face. Alright, again, Thought Seize first. They will probably cast their protection spell preemptively if that's the case. So then my out becomes drawing into another Haka to chump with. Yeah, let's have a look. Alright, no protection spells. We can take Hello Blade, Exile Spirit Dancer, and then we look to be in pretty fine shape. Can play Spirit Dancer. And we can start beating down. Alright, and next room we have another Tybalt that we can cast. Lurus goes to hand, could also Valky and then steal the opponent's Lurus. Alvarens. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's not such a bad idea here. Gotta use every piece of the puzzle here. And they top deck the Karmatra's Blessing a turn late, that's unfortunate. And then we can play Alruns, which is probably going to name Creature, since we could use more threats. And then I don't know if we want to play out our lands or keep them in hand to have a bigger Alruns. Could also be useful if we draw a second Cathartic Reunion. And we'll hit for seven.
All right, they drew a Spirit Dancer and they can escape Sentinel's Eyes, so the game's not over yet. And they have a Karmatra's Blessing for protection. Just a land to draw. So we can turn Falky into Lurus. And that gives us access to Valky and Haka as well. So we'll play the Whispering Raven. And then probably just hit with the Hollow Blade here. And now do we still name Creature? I mean, Sorcery is not going to help with Karmatra's Blessing still in their hands, so I think Creature's still fine. Alright, they found a Staggering Insight, that's problematic. Opponent passes. And then we'll hit with Haka, see what's up. Alright, another Tibalt on top, that seems pretty good. Although I'm not going to have the mana to draw it with Mindstone and play it this turn. But if we keep both on top, we can name Creature with Alrond, which seems quite strong. And then I could play another Valky, since this has turned into a Lurus. So let's see. Mindstone. Play Haka, play Valky. And then I'm probably okay playing out a tap land. And then Alrun names Creature and draws us into two cards. Now we still need to find a way to get rid of that Karmatra's Blessing before we can get rid of Spirit Dancer, but now we're in a pretty dominant position. Can Chum block the Spirit Dancer and just replay Haka or Valky out of the graveyard each turn. So I guess we'll jump with Valky. Could also block with Hollow Blade and Discard, but might as well make use of Lurse. So we'd like to find a Thought Seize for that Karmatra's Blessing. So Haka can go digging. Bottom, bottom. And then we'll play actual Tibalts. And then play another Haka so we don't die to a flying effect. This can plus. Can also find synergies with the opponent's Spirit Dancer as we see Arcane Flight. Yeah, that also works. Can give Alrund flying or perhaps the Seasoned Hollow Blade. Draw with Sram and Spirit Dancer. And play Haka. Well, this has been quite a grindy game. Showing the resiliency of the Auras deck. But I think we're in decent shape now. Now I'll probably name Sorcery 
and there's Thoughtseize, so next turn we can strip away that Garmetra's Blessing. Still probably cast it, giving protection from black. But then the following turn we should be good to go. Spirit Dancer attacks. We'll jump, or maybe at this point I can block and discard. Could have also, you know, blocked with enough creatures to force him to play the Blessing anyway. So a lot of ways we could play it here. And they have double Karmatra's Blessing, all right. Well, I guess I'll force them to use it, and then next turn we can minus again. We'll see what Hakka reveals. Nickel Bolas, that's a good one. Can draw into it with Reunion, play it. And then still play Haka out of the graveyard. Just so we have a blocker in case they top deck a flying enchantment. Alright, I think we're good here. And then next turn at long last, we can get rid of that Spirit Dancer and completely take over. Alright. Opponent definitely put up a good fight. GG's. But uh, Tybalt comes out on top. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice looking hand. Could use an untapped blue source to actually cast release to the wind on turn 3, but we do have a turn 2 Valky. And we've got Cold Steel Heart, which can name blue if we need to take it a turn slower. Opponent with planes, maybe a life gain deck. Nope, Mind Stone, so probably more controlling deck then. Yeah, I mean, we could play Valky here. Or we could wait until we have 5 mana to go Valky plus release if we're afraid of a sweeper effect. Which also makes sense, and then for now just play Cold Steel Heart naming blue. So my removal's probably not going to be at its best here. Another Mind Stone. Alright, Thought Seize is excellent, so we'll have a look first. Alright, opponent is playing the 9 lives combo deck. And Baffling End is currently the only interaction they have. Now, how do we win if our opponent gets 9 lives plus Solemnity in play? Well, we can still win with Nickel Balls the Ravager pretty easily by ultimating. Uh, Tudor could potentially find an answer to my Planeswalkers. So that's a cause for concern as well. So I think we take the tutor, let them keep the nine lives, and then just wait until we can Valky and release in the same turn. So Buffling End is not an issue. And then for now we'll just pass. Could also play Haka and have that exiled by Baffling End, but probably better off waiting until we can Elvrind. So there's a nine lives. That's okay. Alright, it's go time. Play Valky. And release. Bone and draws.
Ah, rest in peace. Probably don't need to cast that one. Field of Ruin goes after my steam vents. Yeah, we actually don't have basic islands, but we do have some basics in the deck. So I won't be able to cast Alvrunt now, unless we hit another blue source. So we'll plus. And Castle Ardenvale I could play, although it doesn't do a whole lot for me. I guess we can run out one Haka. And then cannot cycle the Sweltering Sun, sadly. Just play an extra source here. want to keep lands in hand in case we draw Cathartic Reunion. Ghost Quarter. And Karn the Great Crater. Alright. Baffling End on Haka. Now we do have Blood Chief's Thirst to deal with Karn. But that can maybe find an answer for Tybalt. As we see, Mortal Sun. Yeah, that's going to be an issue. So. Let's see here. Tybalt could ultimate. It's probably worthwhile, and then we get access to Thoughtseize for Immortal Sun. That works out. Everyone out. I have work to do. We see Imrios Call as well. And our opponent explodes. We could Blood Chief's Thirst on Karn, and then we had a release to the wind, so we could also combine that with Haka potentially, or just keep it around in case they find an answer for my Tybalt. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. And we've got turn to Heart into Nicol Bolas with Valky if we draw Release to the Wind with Sweltering Suns as interaction, so... Yeah, this hand seems okay. Let's see what flavor of Lurus deck our opponent's playing. The graveyard kind. So probably a Pyromancer deck and not a Death Shadow deck, judging from the lands that don't deal damage to them. So Sweltering Sun's good against Arcanist and Pyromancer. Croxa gets a land for now. And then Heart names blue, so we have double blue for Alvrund. And this can give us double red for Suns. Right, Thoughtseize probably takes Nicol Bolas. And then hopefully we can pick up a release to the wind at some point. Alright, they actually took Valky. Maybe afraid of the Planeswalker half. And another Stitcher Supplier. So very full graveyard, so next turn I can already escape Croxa. But I'm just gonna play the Ravager here. Discards another Croxa. Alright, this is gonna hurt. One Sweltering Suns can go, and then we can play hard to ramp into Nicol Bolas transformability. Alright, that is Spark Harvest instead to kill Nicol Bolas. At least we don't have to face Croxa quite yet. Alurus goes to hands and release to the wind to draw. Yeah, I think we still play hard. This can name black. And then top decking Valky would be the easiest way out. Opponent could go Lurus into a creature, but then Sweltering Suns can clean those up. Alright, perfect top deck. If 
bulky. Also, hmm. Opponent's got a claim to fame. So that can return a creature. Which I guess would end up being Young Pyromancer. But then they can also give it plus two and haste, so that would kill my Tybalt if I minus. So I guess I have to wait here. I could technically also release to the wind on Croxa. And then if they replay it, it's not escaped, so it just makes me discard. But then of course we don't have a Tybalt in play. So I think we just wait and then probably release to the wind end of turn. And hope to draw a removal spell. So we can start plussing instead. Ah, they're gonna claim Croxa to make me discard. Can get the Sweltering Suns. And then in response to the attack trigger, I'll have to release so I won't have the uh, opportunity to chum block first. Ooh, they're gonna claim. Alright, good thing we have a release to the wind here. Opponent got a bit overzealous, maybe, to use that village rights. They cannot cast Lurus this turn. So, all in all, things kinda worked out okay. Still gonna be in a bit of trouble. Since their opponent can still play Lurus and get something back from the graveyard, but. This is a good start. Is just a hobby. And in fact, the second release means I could exile Tybalt again and then replay him. So that's actually decent and then Croxa can make them discard. Although I think we'll start with release on Tybalt. And then plus. And then I guess we'll play Croxa. If our opponent goes Lurus, replay Croxa at the graveyard, they can put me to one. And if they escape Croxa again, ouch. Blood Chief's Thirst of the Top. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So, had I just kept the other release in hand, we could have maybe avoided that situation, but then we wouldn't have plus Tybalt at the same turn. And yeah, now Blood Chief's Thirst is not going to do much for me. Yeah, that's an unfortunate turn of events after a lucky top deck. Almost managed to turn the game around. But now our opponent's definitely going to take over with double Croxa and Loris plus a full graveyard. Yeah, definitely a close one. We do have the mana to potentially cast a Tybalt if we top deck it. Nickel Bolas almost good enough. But now our opponent can just attack and then escape a second Croxa to burn me out. GG's. Well, definitely an epic game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. No release to the wind, but lots of disruption, so we should be able to buy some time to hopefully draw into it. Could also wait on Thoughtseize, but... I think I should just cast it on turn one here. Alright, opponent on a land destruction deck with Bombardment, Blood Moon, Storm's Wrath, gonna ramp into a Kirabasa Sea God. How much do we care about Blood Sun? They might have the uh, Lotus Field as well to go with it. Could take Restoration as kind of taking a land away from the opponents, or we could take Storm's Wrath, but I can take that with my second Thoughtseize. So I'll just take the restoration for now. I 
And then I don't have to thought seize right now. I could play Valky, but you know, there's definitely the chance that it ends up dying by the time we find a release to the wind, so. I think I just play Taplan and pass, and then next turn maybe we'll thought seize again. Give the opponent the chance to maybe draw into some cards we want to take away. Sweltering Suns all cycle, so I guess we'll just do that now instead. And then wait another turn on Thoughtseize. There's Blood Sun, sure. Of course, if they've drawn Lotus Field in the meantime, we cannot take that one away. Another Sweltering Suns. Probably start by cycling that one. And then we'll have a look. All right, no Lotus Field, Double Storm's Wrath, two more copies of Blood Sun, and a Kiribati Sea God. Maybe just take the Bombardments. That way, if they top deck Lotus Field, we don't have to fear line destruction, and we're probably just going to hard cast Tibalt. Although, Storm's Wrath also deals damage to Planeswalkers, so that's one way they could interact with Tibalt. So it's either Storm's Wrath or Bombardments. Um, I guess we'll go with the Storm's Wrath and then just hope to end the game before they get to 6 mana. Might be ambitious. Another Blood Sun. Alright, Cathartic can discard Thirsts plus something else. In the hopes of finding a release. Although we're pretty close to just casting Tybalt. I think I should still go for it. Another Cathartic and Nicol Bolas. So, play Mindstone and a tap land. So we can play Mindstone, this comes into play untapped thanks to Blood Sun. And then we'll just pass, and then next turn with a land I can play a Tybalt, if not the Ravager. Which can get swept up by Storm's Wrath, so it's not ideal. Opponent up to 5 mana, Mindstone will let them get up to 7 potentially next turn for Kirobasa Sea God. So yeah, that's definitely an issue. But I can play Tybalt and maybe exile the Mindstone. Yeah, I don't hate that. Although if we minus, then Storm's Wrath will kill him. Tough spots. There's also Bombardment to worry about. So maybe we just plus Tybalt and hope for the best. Uh, there's our Lotus Field. So that's going to give us a nice mana boost next turn. Kiribas the Sea God makes a Kraken. Next turn they're going to tap our stuff down. But we get to plus Tybalt once again. And then let's see, we've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. Not enough to play Bolas and Transform, so we might want to save that till next turn. I could ultimate Tybalt before they get to steal it with Kiribati Sea God. And then for now maybe go Tome, draw. Ritual of Soot, actually a pretty nice answer for the Kraken. And pass a turn. So now it's mostly the third chapter we're worried about. I guess we'll be one mana short since the Mind Stone's now tapped because of the Sea God. Bombardment goes after Tybalt. And Lotus Field, which has lost Hexproof now. Although I think this can get around Hexproof anyway. Since you're not actually targeting. Right, Lotus Field gone, that's too bad. So now I probably want to ultimate Tybalt so the opponent cannot do the same. Uh, 
All right, that's quite a hand. I can cast a Seagate Restoration here if I wanted to. That seems fun. And then... Play another Lotus Field. I could play Nicol Bolas, which the opponent won't be able to transform if they steal it. And then we have a way to pressure Tybalt as well. And then might as well Thought Seize. They probably should wait on activating Mindstone here. But we'll take the Storm's Wrath. Opponent gets to steal one of my permanents. And then we've got more copies of Nicol Bolas in hand. Bombardment takes out a land. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. That was a pretty epic game as well. So yeah, we definitely had some fun ones today with this sweet release deck. Even though I don't think we ever got to quite go turn 2 Valky into turn 3 Release to the Wind, which is of course what the deck is built for, but definitely got to enjoy some lengthy, grindy games where we got to see the entire deck in action. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.